Haseyo. My name is uh, Steen. Um, we are going to talk a little about the asset bundle workflow in Unity 5. Um, if you've been to any of the previous Unites, there's always been a talk about asset bundles, and it's always been rated as a highly uh, advanced and a very specific topic. And a lot of complex ideas will have been presented about asset bundles, uh, about building asset bundles and about using asset bundles during the runtime. Um, after we are done here today, I hope that uh, you will see that any future talks about building asset bundles in Unity will be marked as a very simple beginner's session. Um, that is definitely the goal uh, of our uh, work on the asset bundle workflow in, in Unity 5.0. Um, <coughs> Going to start off with a short introduction to asset bundles for those of you who haven't met the, seen the concept before. Uh, we're going to talk a little about how we build asset bundles in Unity 4. Uh, give you an introduction of what are the high-level goals of the asset bundle workflow that we are working, uh, aiming for in the Unity 5 lifecycle. I'll introduce you to what we are actually shipping for you guys in Unity 5.0 and what the future is going to bring for, for asset bundles. Once this is done, uh, I'm going to skip to something completely different, which is the multi-level editing that we're introducing in a future version of uh, Unity 5. And I will show you some demos of how it works. A little about myself. Uh, I work at the, I'm part of the core team at Unity. Uh, I am currently stationed at our office in Shanghai. My main focus areas are the prefabs and the asset management um, and lots of other stuff like serialization that comes under the core team features. Um, hang on, where's my mouse? There it is. So, what are asset bundles? Uh, the concept is actually very simple. Asset bundles is, uh, is files which contains uh, multiple assets. It can be any asset. There are no restriction on what kind of asset you want to put inside an asset bundle. You can put uh, textures, audios, prefabs, uh, models, you can put your own type of asset if you have any of that. Text files, doesn't really matter. You can put everything inside an asset bundle. Uh, and asset bundles, what are they usually used for? Uh, one of the main usages is to reduce the installation size. Uh, this is uh, important for mobile devices. Uh, you create a small installation which only uh, contains your application, the, the main menus, and maybe the first level. And then any additional level you have as asset bundles, which you start downloading after the user has installed the application and starts playing your game. Uh, this allows you to create very small installation packages, which you can install over, the, you know, over 3G, so you don't have to be on Wi-Fi, for example. You can use it for downloadable content if you have prepared your game for that and you want to ship additional content during the lifetime of, of your game. Uh, you can do that. And of, of course you can use them to, if you already have shipped one set of asset bundles but you want to update the content, you just uh, rebuild them, the asset bundles, and uh, change a few lines in, in the script and uh, you can deploy new content, uh, updated content. So in Unity 4, how do you build asset bundles? Uh, so actually, there's, there's only one thing you can do. 
you would have to write editor scripts. You would have to write scripts to load the assets. You would have to manage if there was a model that depended on a texture. You would have to make sure in your scripts that you include both of these assets in your asset bundle. If you have a good reason to divide the model and the texture into two different asset bundles, your scripts would also have to m make sure to, to uh, manage these dependencies. Um, and all of this is only scriptable. and You have to handle everything yourself. So here's a very simple example. I have two models that share the same material. I want to have the two models in separate asset bundles. Uh, this is the simple sort and the awesome sort for my warrior that I want to be able to download as, as content if the user buys it uh, with an in-app purchase. The thing they have in common is the material. Um, and in, in order to avoid duplication, I want to have the material in an asset bundle for itself so I don't have, m uh, so I don't use additional uh, storage space. So because the model depends on the material, we have to start by building the materials. And already here it becomes a little complex because the first thing you have to do is you have to initialize your dependency chain with the, with the push asset dependencies. Then you have to write additional code to load the, the material into the editor and you have to write another line of code in order to build the simple asset bundle. Then we build the model. Uh, again, we have to start by updating the dependency chain and telling the editor that now there's a new asset bundle that depends on the previous. Uh, you again have to load the, the, the asset and you have to rebuild the asset bundle again. And then you have to remember that when you're done building, you have to pop off the dependency. It's a little hairy. I agree, uh, because you have to do exactly the same thing for the third asset bundle. You have to write all of this code for all of your asset bundles. And to make things a little harder, you actually have to terminate the dependency, the dependency chain. Um, and this is uh, often forgotten. And But if you forget to do it, you actually going to break any subsequent asset bundle builds because suddenly any subsequent builds of asset bundles will depend on what you already had pushed to the, to the dependency chain. So you have to be really, really careful. And as you can see, this was a, a pretty basic example of what to do or how to build asset bundles and how to set it up. But I actually had to write more than 10 lines of code for this, for this simple case. Now imagine you have thousands of assets, you have hundreds of asset bundles you want to manage, you have more, even more complex dependencies than I have here. Um, it becomes really complex. Some examples of what we have seen developers do, it's it, obviously they have been writing lots and lots and lots of scripting code. They've spent many, many, many engineering hours on setting all of this build system up and uh, hooking it up with continuous integration. Um, we've seen developers try to make the folders inside Unity uh, reflect the dependency hierarchy, so they would apply really strict rules on the artists, uh, where they were allowed to put their assets and so on. And of course, it becomes complex even for the artist to figure out where am I allowed to put this texture and why can I put it where I just want to have it and where it makes sense right next to the model where I'm supposed to use it. Um, <coughs> and it has been really, really hard for, for some of our customers to do this, especially for the smaller studios where they can't spend the engineering time on this but they want to spend the time on their games instead. Um, so it, it hasn't been that good.
So obviously one of the issues is that you have to write really, really complex scripting. But another issue which might not be as obvious is that once you have set up this building of asset bundles, once you have built your first set of hundreds of asset bundles with thousands of assets and it's, it's taken you two hours or something after you started the build until it's completed, then you realize that you need to change one of the assets like right in the middle of a dependency chain. Uh, and actually it doesn't matter if it was in the beginning of the dependency chain or at the end of the dependency chain. If you do a change, Unity 4 requires you to rebuild everything. Every asset bundle has to be rebuilt. So you do that simple change and you start your build script again and you will be spending another few hours waiting for it to complete. So obviously what some customers did was that at the end when you go home from work on, on your, uh, when your day ends, you start the build and hopefully it's good when you get in in the morning. So with 5.0 and the entire Unity 5 life cycle, we have some goals for, for, making, for improving this for you guys, uh, for our customers. It should be really, really simple to build asset bundles. It should be really, really simple to use uh, and not require hours of development to, to set up. Anyone should be able to do this. Small indie studios shouldn't have to rely on a clever engineer to set this up and write lots and lots of scripting. So we want to have another goal that says no scripting. No scripting at all. We want to do this completely inside the editor. We want to help you handle the dependencies. There are two levels of, de of dependencies. There's the dependencies between assets, um, where if you put a model into the asset bundle, we want to make sure that the texture that it requires is also put in there. Now, if you have set it up so that you want the, the model and the, asset, the texture in a different asset bundles, Unity should take care of handling those dependencies for you and make sure that we're not duplicating data. So we want to handle all of these dependencies for you. We want to improve your build times. We don't want you to spend hours and hours rebuilding asset bundles just because you make a small change. Um, at least if we can't make it build faster, at least make it so that if you make a change to a simple asset in one asset bundle, it should only be required that you build one asset bundle, and not all of them again. Uh, this feature in itself should improve the, your build time significantly. So all of this sounds very good, but what are we actually shipping for you in, in Unity 5? You will see a very, very simple user interface that I will show you later how it works. It's as simple as finding your asset and marking it as part of a, uh, a named asset bundle. We will handle all the dependencies. If you mark a model into a, an asset bundle and you forget to mark the texture, don't worry, we'll put the texture in there for you as well. If you mark the texture into a different asset bundle, we will make sure that Unity knows about this dependency. And we will even present the dependency to you. Because another thing we're going to do is we will put a small text file next to the asset bundle which tells you what's inside the asset bundle and what asset bundles, the current asset bundle, depends on. Unfortunately, we are not quite there yet with, with regards to the scripting issue you are still required to do a little bit of scripting. 
but it's only one line of code. And uh, I'll actually show you how it works, because I feel very confident. Let's see if I can set up the screen. Yes. Okay, so here's the setup. I have a couple of textures that I want to put in an asset bundle. I have a couple of models, actually I have four, and I have materials for these models. First thing, I want the textures in an asset bundle. So I select the folder in this case because I want all of them included. Go down in the corner here and say, new asset bundle. I don't know if you can see it down here in, in the corner. Uh, if you guys down there can see it. Um, <coughs> what I'm actually going to type here is a relative path called textures. And the last name in the path is cat, which will be the name of my asset bundle. There, that's it. Now all the textures in this folder is in an asset bundle. Let's do the same for the models. I multi-select in this case and say I want a new. I put this into a relative folder called models and then cats. I forgot the materials. But no worries, we'll just mark the materials. And we'll add these to the texture asset bundle. So I'll just select my already existing asset bundle. There. That's it. I set up everything needed for two asset bundles with textures and models. So we need to do a little bit of scripting. Create an editor folder. And the script. Here we go. This is a small script that I prepared. It's a menu item. And this is all the API that's required to build the asset bundle. Build pipeline, build asset bundles. I specify the target path assets, streaming assets, because I want it inside my Unity project. In this case, you can put anything in there that you would like to have. Um, and then I added this one line. This is just to make sure that the asset bundles I built will show up immediately in the editor so that I can show you to them, to you. Um, save the script. Go back to Unity. Build my bundle. So let's see in the streaming assets folder. The path that I specified, models and textures. The actual asset bundle. And the manifest file. The file that we put next to the asset bundles will look uh, similar to this. Um, the first part up here we are using internally in order to determine what parts of the, of the asset bundles needs to be rebuilt. It's a simple hash of all the assets. So if one asset changes, the hash will change and we know that this asset bundle has to be rebuilt. It lists the types of objects inside the asset bundle as well. You will get a list of what assets are actually included. So if any of you worked with the asset bundle system in, in 4, you will know that once you've built the asset bundle, you can't actually query what's inside it. Um, we might change that, but at least for now, you can see the list here. And at the very end, 
it tells you that this asset bundle depends on the asset bundle called cats in the textures folder. Um, which is all the information you need to load this asset bundle first and then load your models and you have everything that's required in the runtime. So let's go back here and uh, go over here. I'm going to change the material a little. There, the material has changed. Now what I would expect to happen when I rebuild all of my asset bundles is that only the asset bundle with the textures and materials is going to be modified. I don't want the models to be rebuilt. So I built, and we go up here. So our models were built three minutes ago, 1520. Our textures has just been built. So that part is also going to work and hopefully improve your build times a lot. Um, so you might be able to, or so you will be able to iterate faster on, on your asset bundles. Uh, now I have to change back to my setup, so hang on. What will we do in the future versions of Unity 5? We have a few ideas. One thing that we are considering are the, is to have a build settings window for asset bundles, just as there is a build settings window for the player right now. We want to create a window where you can see what asset bundles you have specified. You'll see the target path. You'll see if any of them requires rebuilding, uh, you, we might make it easy for you to, to see the dependencies. And we have other ideas of, uh, for this window. And finally, there will be a build button. So you just specify your target path and press the build button. No more scripting required. And hope. The, the, this, this will be uh, easy to use for anyone. No more advanced sessions on building asset bundles. So now that we have been introduced to this really, really simple concept of, of building asset bundles, I will skip to something completely different, which is the multi-scene editing that we are introducing in, in a future version of Unity 5. So what, is, what are the problems that we're trying to solve with multi-scene editing? Well, obviously, if you have a very, very large game world and you want it to stream fluently, you might consider it as one level, but at the same time, it's too big to be in one scene. So you split up your, your level into multiple scenes. Um, and this works fine. We have runtime APIs to do load level additive and, and you get your objects loaded. Uh, but you can only edit one scene at a time. So if you want to align objects between two different scenes, you have to be very careful about the positioning of the objects and their the, 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 the spatial uh, position. Uh, so Editing, uh, yeah. The other problem we want to solve is the, the, the collaboration. Sometimes game developers 
split up their level because they want multiple artists to work in the same level at the same time. Um, and if any of you have tried having two artists work in the same scene at once and they both save and push it to your version control software, um, you're going to go into a lot of merge conflicts. Uh, the workaround for that is to split your scene into to, to multiple scenes so the artists can have an area to work on. But when you have been assigned an area, you want to know what's next to it, roughly. Uh, which again requires you to load the scene and unload the scene and load the neighbor scene. So we want to solve this as well. The proposed solution is, is obvious. We want to be able to edit multiple scenes at the same time in the editor. Um, but not only that, we want to make sure that, that, the, the, um, that you can see if you change the lights, lighting settings of, of one scene, that what's the effect going to be on the scene that you load additively during the, the game. And all of these small workflow things that, that will improve uh, for you guys when you work on multiple scenes. Now once you figure out how to m work on multiple scenes, many of you have probably already tried uh, in the runtime to do a load level additive, which will take, you load one scene and you have a bunch of game objects, then you load a scene additively. This is going to merge game objects into your current scene. This is fairly easy. The hard part is getting rid of this scene again. Now imagine the example of uh, a player is walking around in one section and he walks into another section and it's, it is loaded ahead of him so he, it's a smooth walk for the, for the guy, for the player. Now when he walks back, you want to remove that scene. And if you don't carefully arrange your game object hierarchies or have some other mechanism of figuring out what game objects do I need to destroy in order to unload this scene, then it can be quite difficult. What we want to do with the multi-scene editing is to give you a scene manager API that you can use at runtime. You simply say scene manager dot load scene and it will load your scene. Then you can do a scene manager load additive, which will behave as previously. It will merge an additional scene into your current scene. In the background, we will do all the bookkeeping of the game objects. So you can save, you can say scene manager, unload scene, and we will make sure to clean up everything that you loaded with the load API. I'll show you how it works. just have to close my previous session. Here I have a simple level, contains four sectors. Previously, you would load sector 1.1. One, one. You would edit it. Then you would load sector 1.2, which is next to it, and you would edit it. Now you need the scenes to align. You would load this one again. And you would load the, you'll go back and forth like this. With multi-scene editing, you just add your scene to the scene hierarchy. It will show you here what scenes are available for you. Once you drag the scene from the project to the hierarchy view, it's not going to load it. You will have to have to load it yourself with a simple click. You can unload it again. I can add as many scenes as I want. 
can load them all. Now, I'm not an artist, so I did not align the terrains in this case, um, but I could have. Um, I mean, this is very simple. We also have the concept of a active scene. Because when you now create a game object, where should it end up? I mean, you have multiple scenes. You want to know exactly where it goes. So you have an active scene, which is the one marked in bold up here. If I create a cube, it is added to the active scene. I can drag between scenes. They don't have to be active for that. So I just move the cube from sector 1.1 one, one to sector 1.2. Of course, it works with the uh, undo, so we'll just move it back. Um, and this is very, very simple to do. Now, when you have multiple scenes in your game that you want to merge, what happens with the, with the render settings that you've set is that the first scene you load will apply the render settings. So you might set your, your skylight to one, a certain color. Any additional scene you load using load additive will merge the game objects into the scene, but it's going to apply the render settings from the first scene you loaded. And you want to see what that looks like. You would prefer to see it in the editor before you have to build a player and go there to test it. <coughs> in this case, sector 1.1 one, one has a skylight that makes everything orange. And sector 2 is loaded and has everything orange as well. So this is nice. Now. Someone might have set up render settings differently on sector 2. So now when playing your game, it actually matters the order in which you load the scenes because they might have different render settings. If you want to know how it will look depending on the order you, you, you load the scenes, the previously you had to change your scripting code and load the scenes differently. Now in the editor we can just change to scene 2 as the active scene. This has this blue skylight. So now you know what scene 1 will look like with the blue skylight that was applied in scene 2. Um, so this is for the, for, for the editor. For the runtime, we have this very simple scene manager. Let's see if I can resize this. Yes. The first line here is uh, a button I have in my runtime to load a scene. This is my API to add a scene. And instead of doing a lot of work on maintaining game objects and doing bookkeeping, all I need to do is to tell the scene manager to unload the scene. And of course we can test this. I load scene 2 with my simple API and I unload it again. You'll notice here that all the game objects are there and the scene is there. Unloading will only remove the game objects. In the scene manager, there's still going to be an entry uh, for the scene, but it's not anything that has an overhead. It's just the second time you decide to load a scene, the scene manager already knows it and doesn't have to do the lookup. Uh, so this is hopefully going to improve uh, your workflow when working on multiple scenes. Um, and I'm really looking forward to see what, what, what you guys will, will, will do with it. Going back. Um, So 
So that was it for today. Is there any questions about the asset bundle building or about the multi-scene editing? Someone with a microphone. Yes. Yeah. 그, 그 세션을 두아그두개 정도 주제를 해주셔서 질문 두개 해도 될지 일단 모르겠네요. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. 그러면 이제 먼저 그 에셋 번들 먼저 질문을 드리겠는데요. 예, 에셋 번들을 이제 중간에 업데이트한 기능 되게 그 마음에 드는 것 같고요. 어. 예, 근데 그 한국 개발자들에서 이제 문제를 그좀 니즈는요, 그 필요한 거는 이제 런타임 그간 그 개발할 때그 에셋 펀드 빌드한 거는 그 하드웨어를 좋은 하드웨어를 마련해서 해결할 수가 있는데, 네. 그런데 이제 그 유저에게 이제 배포를 했을 때그 에셋 펀드를 전체를 배포한 게 저는 이제 좀 심각하다고 생각을 합니다. 근데 그 현재 만들어 주신 기능을 그 배포할 때도 쓸수 있게 그 런타임에서도 쓸수 있는 기능인지 일단 좀 궁금합니다. 에셋 번들 업데이트 하는 기능을요? 질문 답 질문이 좀 잘못 전달된 것 같은데 그 모바일 클라이언트에서 에셋 번들을 이제 그 새로운 데이터들로 뭐 업데이트 할수 있는가 이거에 대해서 질문 드렸습니다. 그 한국에는 이제 온라인 게임 개발자들이 많기 때문에 예를 들어서 이제 와우 같은 걸 보면은 이제 대부분의 이제 메인 데이터를 패치를 하고요. 그다음에 이제 신규 컨텐츠 업데이트 된 거에 대해서 이제 따로 패치를 하게 되는데 그 다음에 이제 그 패치된 데이터를 이제 합치는 일을 하게 되거든요. 이게 파일들이 너무 많아지니까요. 그런 식으로 이제 그 통합 관리를 좀 하게 되는데 그 이미 그런 기능이 이제 만들어 주신 것 같기 때문에 그걸 이제 에디터 상에서는 되는데 런타임에서도 혹시 가능한가? 오, oh, you want to Let me see if I understand. You want to download a new asset bundle during runtime? Yeah, yeah. 부분만 업데이트 전체 패치가 아니라 예, 부분 패치만 하고 싶은데. 예. Um, you don't have to download all asset bundles if you have if you have multiple. You need to download the one that was changed. 음, 단일 파일로 관리를 좀할 수는 없는 거군요. 에셋 번들 하나로 관리를 하고 싶은데. Yes, you can. 아, 할수 있네요. 그리고 두 번째 질문은요. 그두 번째 멀티 씬 로드도 되게 마음에 드는 기능인데요. 혹시 그저그 어, 그 기능을 보고 생각난 것이 기시나 이제 SBL 쓰고 컴플리트가 났을 때 머지 할때 쓰면 되게 좋겠다라고 생각을 했는데 혹시 커맨드 라인에서도 되는 기능인지 좀 궁금합니다. Um, you ask you. Let me see if I get this correct. You would like to actually 
merge the, the, the text file that represents the scene. 아니요. 그두 개, 이제 컴플렉트 나온 두 개의 씬이 있을 때, 그 예를 들어서 토르토이스 SVN이나 이제 그런 그 예, SVN 프로그램 같은 데서 이제 컴플렉트가 났을 때, 이제 컴플렉트 된 파일 두 개가 나올 거고, 그러면 그거를 이제 동시에 오픈하면은 그두 개를 보면서 이제 합치는 작업을 되게 손쉽게 할수 있어 보이거든요. Yes, version control has not been considered in that way. Um, I think it's something we should consider. Ah, yeah, 감사합니다. 그 가능하면 프리팹도 좀 머지할 수 있게 좀 예, 매우 좋은 기능에 또 확장이 가능해 보이거든요. 예, 잘 부탁드리겠습니다. Yeah, prefabs is different. I think we have a few little more time. Hello. I have a question about another thing. Now, SF 번들에 보면은 이제 그 스크립트를 포함하는 기능이 없는데 현재는 이제 편법을 이용해가지고 이제 뭐 텍스트 파일에다 리플렉션 이용해가지고 하는 방법이 있잖아요. 이제 이런 거는 이제 기본적으로 혹시 포함할 그런 생각이 있으신지? Um, by script you mean assemblies? Or yes. Uh, we are not going to change the way that works. You still have to load the assembly yourself and do reflection to, f to uh, get the script out of the assembly. Okay. Hi, I have a question about the multi-scene editing. Um, can you optionally specify which object you want to merge? Which game objects you want to merge? Yeah, in each scene. Because, um, for example, you might be... Um, okay, so one scene you may have a, a main camera in one scene. Mm -hmm. In another scene you might have a same camera as well. So when you merge the scene you might have two main cameras. So do you, do you have an option to specify which objects in the scene you want to merge and not? No, it will load everything from both scenes. So it will have dual reputation of your main camera. Right. Will, will there be any features to improve that kind of conflict situation? That will be really useful though. Yeah. <laughs> Because the, the, the purpose of this whole thing is to make an artist to work on each different scene. So yes. in each, each different scene you might have artists having your cameras to, to, to look at the you know, world they, where, they, where they wanted to. Yeah. So Yeah, you so you might want to like mark objects as yeah, being exactly. excluded when loading multiple. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I get the idea. Um, I'll take a note. Thanks. Hi. Um, with uh, items that are loaded at runtime, is it possible to um, switch them to a new scene? at runtime, because if you were to unload one of the scenes, say you, you spawned a bot in this other area, but it followed you back to the first place, and you unload that area, the bot's gone too. Is yeah. there a way to don't, un, don't destroy on unload or change which scene it belongs to at runtime? There's an API in the scene manager, I think it's called uh, move game object, and it moves it from one scene to another, so it becomes part of the hierarchy of the other scene. Multi-scene 
나중에 그 동시에 활성화를 시켜가지고 렌더링을 가능한가요? 음, could, could, could you run me through an example? 어, 일단 씬은 하나는 라이트만 있어요. 그 씬을 그래픽 디자이너가 작업을 하고요. 또 다른 씬은 터레인이랑 배경들이 있어요. 거기는 또 이제 배경 모델러가 작업을 하고 있어요. 그두 개를 같이 적용시켜서 돌아가는 것을 확인을 가능한가요? 예, yes, that that is uh, very much the point of the multi scene editing is that you can have one guy doing the lighting and you can have another guy doing your static backgrounds. Um, and then in the multi scene editing you load both scenes and the light that was set up in one scene will affect the back static backgrounds in the other scene. Yeah, 감사합니다. Ah, yeah. The update system will also be used to use the update system. I have a few problems with the update system. One is that the update file is not only the content of the content of the content, but also the 어셋 번들을 만들었을 때 단순히 어셋 번들 파일 비교만으로는 그 파일이 변경이 됐는지 안 됐는지 알수 없어서 그거를 따로 이제 실제로 어셋 번들을 만드는 파일들을 변경이 됐는지를 관리하는 걸 만들어서 비교를 했었어요. 예를 들어서 똑같은 프로젝트를 다른 컴퓨터에서 빌드를 하면 다른 어셋 번들 파일이 나왔거든요. 그리고 두 번째는 유니티 버전이 올라갈 때 어셋 번들을 다시 만들어야 할 경우가 있었는데 이거를 명확하게 알수 있는 방법이 없어서 실제로 이제 되는지 안 되는지를 직접 확인해 보는 수밖에 없었거든요. 그래서 업데이트 시스템 하는데 이런 에러 사항이 있는데 혹시 이걸 뭐 개선해 주실 수 있, 있는지 질문을 드리고 싶습니다. Um, there, with regards to the issue of having to rebuild asset bundles uh, every time you update Unity, then we are going to fix that. Uh, currently, if you build an asset bundle in 4.1 and you deploy your game to iOS, you want to update to 4.2, you actually have to rebuild all your asset bundles. You have to redeploy them to the user, and this might be hundreds of megabytes of data that he has to download again. With Unity 5, uh, we want to ensure compatibility of asset bundles between versions. So you, if you update to a new version of Unity, you change one asset bundle only, you can deploy that, and all the asset bundles you already deployed with the previous version of Unity 5 will still work. Can, can you repeat that? Uh, 같은 프로젝트를 다른 컴퓨터에서 빌드를 했을 경우에 다른 어셋번들 파일이 나오거든요. 그게 정확하게 어떤 내용인지 모르겠지만 내용을 보니 그러니까 속에 있는 어셋 정보 말고도 이외에 메타 정보가 들어가 있던데 이것 때문에 실제로 들어가 있는 어셋이 변경이 됐는지 안 됐는지를 따로 만들어 그러니까 비교를 하는 시스템을 따로 만들어서 비교를 했어야 했거든요. 어, 레드미 씨, if I have this, so you you have 
two artists working on different machines. Um, and they are changing assets for the same asset bundle. Is that correct? No, 그러니까 같은 프로젝트인데요. 예를 들어서 빌드 컴퓨터에 문제가 생겨서 다른 컴퓨터에서 빌드를 했을 때 어셋 번들 파일이 달라 달라지는 문제가 있었, 있었어요. 그래서 어셋 번드 그게 왜꼭 그래야 되는지를 알고 싶거든요. Right. So you're referring to that building asset bundles is not binary deterministic? Um, <clears throat> because we introduced the feature of, of uh, maintaining compatibility between versions of Unity, uh, the asset bundles built on a different machine will, will, will work. Um, of course, it's, it's still a problem that if you build the same asset bundle with the same content, on two different machines, you might get minor binary differences. Um, we haven't figured out how to fix that, that yet, so that it's, it is completely deterministic, but it is something we are considering and that we would like to do. Uh, when? I don't know. I think the time is up. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.